I'm going I'm going with that. Alright, yeah. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the edit place. It has indeed been a long time since I've uploaded to this uh, channel. This is technically my second channel for those of you who may be visiting for the first time. You can check out my main one in the description. But today I'm going to start a new series where I basically kind of practice my own cinematography skills. And hopefully you can practice these too. Um, I'm using this awesome piece of software called Set Alight 3D. I've talked about it on this channel before, but what I thought would be interesting is to check out the latest amazing movies, cinematography trends, and see uh, how closely we can recreate a screen grab or a scene from those movies, commercials, wherever within this software. And so for today, we are going to be checking out the latest Batman movie, 2022, Robert Patterson. Amazing movie. If you haven't seen it already, this is not the most high quality screen grab, but it's good enough for our purposes. And so this is what we are going to attempt to recreate within this software. So I'm going to move this off to my second screen for now. We jumped in here just to a medium sized room and we're pretty much going to delete everything. If you have no idea how this software works, basically we get a bunch of different photography and uh, filmmaking gear. And over here on the right is what our final image looks like since I just deleted that light. But you can see if I were to move this around in front, kind of gives you an idea of what this light would give off. Um, but we're just going to delete all this. I'm going to change this from a stills camera to move that out away for a bit. And first let's grab a model. Obviously I don't have a Batman model to import. So this guy kind of has uh, Robert Patterson uh, vibes to him. And for pose, of course, um, this software has really cool like posing mode that you can automatically like change every limb for, but it can take a long time to set those up. So I kind of like just using one of the presets He's pretty much just standing there, so let's see. All right, so this one is pretty close. And then for the background, I believe I can change this. Yep, picture. Um, and this is just like some wallpaper type thing. Again, this is mostly about matching like tones and stuff, so rust. I know that sounds weird, but kind of feel like this will be the closest we can get for now. I believe you could upload a picture. Yeah, a picture wall right here. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right, so we do actually have a bookshelf. And the color of this is pretty dark too, sure, something like that. I'm actually going to duplicate this and around. All right, so then we need a wall fixture. So I know this is gonna probably look stupid, but I'm actually gonna use this bedside lamp because it's kind of gonna give off the same, same sort of vibes and I'm basically going to put it in the roughly the same spot I may duplicate it and get two we'll see how the lighting looks and then he's going to go somewhere around here and then last thing we just need a door of some kind all right I'm actually going to use this like wardrobe thing and make it black so we're starting to see the little lamp glowing back there let's get let's throw just a light in here so we can get our composition all right, and we are still on vertical, so I want to go horizontal. Okay, and we're pretty tight, so let's see. Two forward, one. Let's go 50 mil. How's that looking? This room also looks deeper. I think it may be even something like an 85. Let's go 24 FPS. TA, we're definitely shallower than that. I'm going to say, like, let's try T4. May even be less than that. Based on the blur, all right, so just so you guys can see where we're looking at right now, um, again, we're getting things kind of as close as we can, um, and so far it's looking pretty good. Obviously, the, the lighting hasn't matched yet. I'm mostly looking at the composition, and so we got our little bookshelf here. We got some sort of warm wall light and the black uh, door kind of right behind him. So now, and the colors of the walls actually do match pretty close. That's hilarious. Um, now there is someone in the foreground and so I'm actually going to add a second person and grab this older guy. 
I basically want to turn him. And then you can see here, you can <laughs> totally control each part of the body. So I'm going to have him looking down and simply rotate him. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, for composition wise, we got the person in there kind of in the foreground out of focus. Now let's start lighting this thing. All right. So the first thing we're looking at is to light him. Um, and again, we can tell it's some sort of like top light because we got that little highlight right there as well as right here. And we can see the shadow right under his nose. Get rid of the sky panel. We're just going to act as if this is a big like soft box looking thing. All right, so while this looks beautiful, the issue is, is that we're using a very wide uh, surface area light um, since this is just like the equivalent to a panel. And so you can see it's giving like a very even soft uh, kind of look to it. And this is kind of a much harsher shadowed and more of a spotlight type of thing. So I'm going to remove this and let's actually grab a aperture like, uh, we'll say 300D. And I actually want to remove the stand, which I believe I can do. Yeah, obviously that's very strong. Maybe we add a little bit of diffusion. Bring in a diffuser here. Again, remove this. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, you know what? Going back to the drawing board and try another light. All right, my daughter Aviva woke up, so she's gonna help me finish this. Try something like this. Ooh, I'm, I'm liking this light, I'm liking this light. There's a slight gradient right here where this side is slightly brighter than this, but not too much. All right, and I think it's time to bring in kind of a backlight here. I'm gonna bring one of these 300 X's, aim it at the background here, and then we're going to add a diffuser. I'll make this diffuser a lot bigger, just to cover the area. And we're gonna warm up this, bring down the intensity. The only thing in mind we don't see, I'm not seeing a ton of this wall, so maybe I. I think I should move this bookshelf to be a bit more behind him. Can I widen this? Man, this piece of software is so cool. All right, so now, I guess that's closer. So now we see some of this wall here. I think it's hitting him a little too much, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of a block. I'm going to add a gel to this top light. Something like that, maybe, maybe a little bit more on the green side. Something like that, something like that. You do see his eyes pretty well, and with this top light, you definitely lose the eyes. So I wonder if they're reflecting back into it. Let me try really small, like, spotlight, sort of. I know this is dumb, but just let me humor me for a moment. You do see the, the twinkle. I mean, we gotta have some sort of eye light, right? Remember, I'm not saying this is how they did it. I'm saying... This is how you could do it, and this definitely is on the budget side. Does he have, like, a leather jacket? Ooh, and I can harden the jacket. Okay, yeah, this this is a lot better than this suit. This is closer to that material. Should have done this in the beginning. The leather jacket definitely was a better choice. Uh, should have done that sooner, but you can kind of see it's starting to give off that kind of spotlighty, harsher effect. Wish I could get something on the top of his head that gave that kind of spotlight look. And try this, like, greasy hair. You're kind, of, you're kind of catching it, but not not really. Oh, that's... Okay, see? That's what I was missing, the motivated light. We have this kind of top-down look for him. That's all great. We have kind of the shadow underneath the nose. Uh, his is a bit harsher. Maybe if I just raise this this level slightly. Yeah, I guess. So I like that. Uh, but what I think the only thing I'm kind of missing... We can see that our foreground character, this out of focus dude, is pretty much dark, while here he's light. So while I added a small light to add as an eye light, amateur move. It's not motivated, it just feels kind of like video light. Um, so I'm guessing there is a light source that is closer right in front of this subject because his chin is being lit up, and that is what will act as or motivate 
the eye light. First, I'm going to try another, another lamp. I'm just going to put it just out of frame, but like below this guy's chin. Uh, it's not giving me the same direction. So I'm going to add this super tiny, super yellow. Bring it down real. Do we need the longer one? Yeah. Okay. I think that's what we were missing. I'm going, I'm going with that. All right. Yeah. Cause now our foreground character has a little bit of light. I feel like it may have been a harsher source. I kind of, I forget the rest of the scene. So I don't remember what objects were right down here that would motivate this. Uh, maybe it's like a street light coming through a window. I'm not sure. Um, but they're more lit up. We still have a flicker of an eye light. You know, I'd give this, if I had to do like a confidence score, I'd give this like 80. What do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to get subscribed and doing a bunch of these because I need the practice. Um, and I think it's super interesting to try to recreate the lighting setups, especially using stuff that, um, you know, you can kind of just figure out at home. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what other movies, TV shows, commercials, whatever screen grabs um, you think I should do, hit me up on Twitter at Initial Focus if you want to just send me a picture and maybe I'll do some of uh, the stuff you guys send me. But yeah, this was fun. Again, if you want to check out Elixir's software, Satellite 3D, I'll leave it in the top link down in the description below. It's uh, super awesome, super practical. And what's cool is once you kind of finalize a look you like, uh, you can actually go to this export and uh, actually save the entire diagram. So if you were doing pre-production for one of your own shoots that you wanted to uh, set this up for, um, you can straight print this out and it will literally tell you like where to place every light, what um, strength you have it at, what Calvin, like everything. Um, and so that's really cool and you can kind of finalize the look of the set that you want and get your render shot export this have it as a pdf on your own set and so yeah so satellite 3d super cool see you guys in the next video